good Wednesday morning. And what is going on today on Ice Age TV? Oh no, I just figured something else out. <laughs> Change of plans. See that F450 Dooley right there? What do you think that thing's gonna do today? Oh my gosh. So I gotta, gotta take things apart and put them back together. So follow me along on Ice Age TV. Toe day, what? Number 10? Four? What the hell are we doing now? Uh-oh. Yeah, so what the hell's going on, right? You know what? I gotta think to myself, I'm gonna use that F450 Dually to tow this trailer. That Dually's barely got any miles on it. I think I'm gonna take the yellow Bronco. And yeah, I mean, part of me is like, yeah, load everything up with that big ass car hauler, but screw that. I'm leaving this morning. So, what I'm gonna do, well, you just follow along here. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. How about that idea, right? <laughs> All right, first thing I gotta do is I gotta take this receiver. You know, that other truck didn't have all these components. Thank God, thank God I got a bunch of trucks, right? So I'm going to take this hitch apart and put it on the dually over there. Because, see, there's one, two other components. Part of that big-ass hitch that the other guy I traded in didn't give us that stuff. Now, what's really cool about these adjustable hitches, I just lowered this down all the way to the bottom here. Because this dually is so high in the back. So we give this trailer more of a, a level playing field. All right, how about that? Now, question is, does this have a lot of tow technology in it? We gotta put the... All right, so look at this truck here. It's getting 15.2 miles per gallon. Now that's without a trailer. So the debate is today with the trailer, what is this thing gonna get, right? And my guess is I think this thing will get 14 miles a gallon okay so i'm sure some people right now are saying what the hell is going on I mean, why the hell did you just unhook your bronco truck from his trailer right yeah so if anybody's here watching my channel they're like what the hell's going on here oh you know how i did that i i figured it out i hit something on the road on 81 so i ran over something and it blew apart and that's what happened. That's how I got damaged. That's how I just figured out. So yeah, so what the hell's going on, right? So, okay, here, here's what's going on. This truck here is a 20 gallon tank. I'm gonna get maybe seven to, I'm gonna get seven miles a gallon. So I'm literally gonna be going to the gas station, you know, every 100, you know, maybe 120 miles, but you know, you're pushing it when you're on that 95. So it's just a never ending. This, we're gonna have to stop this truck today eight times, at least. So my theory is that this truck here is gonna get you know, 14 miles a gallon. This should go at least 300 miles, if not more, you know, before I have to fill it up. So today, and then the same thing with this Bronco, that's gonna go close to 300 miles. So. We're gonna probably stop like three times for fuel today. You know, maybe four. You get to the bathroom, get to eat. Versus this is gonna be like eight times. It's such a drag. So I came to closure for my kid. I think this is pretty exciting. She'll be really excited. My wife's gonna first, you know, contest it, but I'm gonna drive the dually and then she's gonna drive the Bronco. And yeah, I mean, I could you know, spend all the time and energy and get that car hauler all set up and throw the bikes and that Bronco in there. But it's just so much freaking work. I'm not up for it right now. So that'll be another day in our project. So yeah, you know, at the end of the day, this would be $1,000 in fuel. Well, between these two vehicles here, up and back, I'm, I would think I'd be more like 700, 800. I don't know. It could be the same. It could be, you know, I haven't run those numbers or whatever. So we may just leave the Bronco down in Florida you know, who knows? I don't know how this all going to play out. Or leave the dually down in Florida. I have no idea. That's two weeks from now or whenever. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so the whole Bronco tow review has been ditched. <laughs> now it's the Ford F-450 towing a whopping 3,700 pounds down the road. Yeah, okay. You want to watch that video? I mean, really would have been cool videos. Definitely, 
deal with a car hauler where that's a 12k car hauler and we'd be pulling close to that that'd be a pretty cool video but oh well i'm out of time i'm gonna spend this whole day putting that together i think this should be fun i'm excited about this little dually this little dually is just so badass i mean come on we'll be doing burnouts you'd be doing burnouts to that thing over there with that big trailer so now i gotta trade all my gear out <laughs> into this vehicle yeah i woke up about 4 30 this morning and i couldn't go back to sleep and i finally just like screw this i'm getting out of bed i'm gonna get things rock and rolling so my kid walks out of the door she was like what the hell all right follow me along yeah does this look, look like the typical teenagers back area <laughs> yeah right <laughs> all right here we go and you know that toolbox that's some weight right there but anyways here's the project you know these two-door broncos the four-door bronco it's a big difference inside if you don't you know i'm not lying so this this is a whole different setup for how your seats lay down and so it's just a different ball game gotta have room for the dogs right so we gotta get these things pulled back up but the seats these seats lay like on the floor so these are like these old uh jump seats you know so you look back here you're literally on the floor mine that whole frame is lifted up in the air i'll show you in a second well making headway right good tow vehicle would be that little bronco i didn't order a hitch package on it but not enough damn room. I think my creativity's going to be better, right? As the chiggers. Oh, my God, dude. You guys have no idea. My property's just loaded with chiggers right now. If it wasn't for me finding some spray, I'd be eating alive. That's a whole other story. All right. We're making progress. Time getting truck and start heading to Florida. Here it is, 7 o'clock. And, hey, what am I driving, right? I'm driving a badass little uh, two-door F450, man. I'm, I'm, this, I'm excited about this truck, actually. Kids over in the Bronco. All right. Well, here's the 1,000-mile trip. This is a 1,000-mile road day. We're at 15 miles per gallon, but we haven't really towed with this truck. And I've mentioned before, this truck only has 3,700 96 miles just say 3800 miles this truck's two years old sounds like me right and you know so how does this f450 do with this little stubby i mean this is a measly trailer first thing i'm mean, we're talking when we're probably trying to get 3800 pounds you know but how does this truck handle did i jinx myself from at the last minute pulling away from the ford bronco to this vehicle here and you know, she set up right. You know, I did a lot of stuff. This is a used truck. I'm putting a lot of faith that this truck here is good, if you know what I mean. So, uh, it's always about the adventure, right? I don't think my kid will make that. So, she'll be back a little ways from me, but oh well, is what it is. So, uh, anyways, you know, this truck, you know, some people are like, you're going on a road trip on a used truck? Yeah, now that's at 137,000 miles. Yeah, I get it. Said 97,000 miles. Yeah, I get it. But this is still a brand new truck. I mean, this truck's not even broken in. And these diesel motors, you know, I've read these diesel motors, it's not even until like 10,000 miles that these things really are kind of have seated themselves and really have become the, the motor of the, the motor. I mean, that's how the Cummins motors are years ago. What's interesting is... Yeah, what's really interesting is, hey, good morning, Ice Age TV here. If anybody's here watching me, you're probably like, wow, this is all over the place, man. I mean, you've gone from driving an electric vehicle to then saying you're driving your Bronco for another tow review to now you're driving that 450 and blah, blah, blah. You, Jesus Christ, it's all over the place. Yeah, yeah, I know. And, and you know, I, I last night laying in bed, I just got thinking, this F-450 truck would just be so much fun to take to Florida. I mean, this is my kid's favorite vehicle. And my father, who's 90 years old, you just have no idea the relationship my father and daughter have. You know, my father, they just, they're just two of a kind. 
<laughs> it's classic. And thank God my dad's in good health where he gets to enjoy a lot of things. So they go do things together. And I just know she's going to love driving him around in this dually truck. And, and then she's going to love driving around in that Bronco. You know, is it the summer for the kid? Is 18 years old, just graduated, and the kid gets to have fun this summer, you know? Does everybody remember that? You know, your last year of freedom before you had to go into real world? At least it was for me, because I didn't go to college. I came out of high school and just started working, and I never stopped. No lie. I never stopped working. You know, here's some people that they get a month off. Some people take six months off, a year off, you know, because they're just, you know, not me. So anyways, here's the whole thing. You know, I was laying in bed last night, and I just kind of came to closure that taking that Bronco, I just dread it. I just dread the idea, because I've done it. Where you're pulling over every 100 miles, you're constantly looking for a gas station. It's the worst. So, I just feel like we're going to go from eight, nine stops to probably three, four stops. And, you know, I'm really intrigued to see how this truck tows it's not a lot of weight so it's pretty piddly for the what it's set up but at the same time there's a trailer you know how does the truck behave because these big f's you know series the, the the fords you know i love these ford trucks but the downside to this ford truck is the front axle it's a solid front axle and they walk they walk when i switched over the other day from that ev my F-150 Lightning towing to my F-250 towing, it's like night and day. That F-150 is like on rails. My Ram trucks were like on rails, you know, but these Fords, and, and believe it or not, I've brought this up at the dealership many times. One sales guy told me that for 2022, they addressed that problem. But you know what? I don't know about that because I drove my F-250 2022 truck here just the other day, and that front end, you know, still has that walking, you know, and it wears you out. And a long ride, the constant maneuvering the steering wheel to keep the truck in, the, in between the lines, you know, it just gets old after a while. It's very wearing. So the Ram, I've said many times, the Ram truck in my, my book is the best tow vehicle you can buy. It's the best vehicle you can buy, towing. It's just a rock-solid Cummins motor. The way the suspension's set up, you know. And, yeah, I drifted away from Ram. This one's because I didn't like it. I just kind of went to the Ford product line. And I have relationships. If you understand, it's, I have relationships with finance, with Ford Motor Credit. And I have relationships with Ford dealers. And so they just, I don't have that. You know, I don't have that. Ram, you know, for Dodge, they're... They're like credit division. I do not like it. I do not like Chrysler Capital. But to me, they're nasty. They're nasty. You know, Ford Motor Credit, they work with businesses. You know, I went through horrific times during that pandemic. You know, people watch my videos, and I know, like, this guy's rich as hell. I am not. I'm crazy as hell. You know, I'm a guy that's got to pay freaking boatload of freaking car payments and truck payments every month. Yeah, when times get tough. Guess what goes bye-bye? Cars and trucks. A year ago, cars and trucks went bye-bye. You know, so the whole point is, Ford Motor Credit, they helped me through that pandemic. Chrysler Capital, I had some really nice cars. They crapped all over me. That's why I got rid of my stuff. I got sick of those guys. They crapped. I mean, you have no idea what they did when I got into hardships and I asked for some relief. Oh, they gave us some relief. Oh, that's $5,000 of finance charges on us extending you some payments to help you get through some challenging times. You think I'm making that up? I'm not making that stuff up. That's why I was like, I'm done. You know, Chrysler. And so then for me, my local Dodge dealer, the, the management, the local Dodge dealer, I've, I've, done deal, deal, done, I've been doing business with him for 10 years. The, man, the owner kicked out the GM. Uh, it brought in all these other people, and I just don't like... It's not the same environment, and I just, you know, so I just don't have that relationship anymore I used to have. So a lot of guys on my Dodge forum, you know, people are like, you, you totally abandoned Dodge and Ram. Well, it's because there's a lot of things that you don't know about, you know, and that's why on this video, 
you know, I'm sharing that information. And, you know, so people can understand a little bit more what's going on. So for the most part, I just like the Ford product, but I'm just talking about this F-450 where I can already tell without even being out on the highway, this truck, I think, is walking some. But it's a 2020 model. Well, like I said earlier, 2022, a gentleman was telling me that the, he thought that Ford had addressed that issue. And, you know, once again, I don't think anything's changed personally. You know, so all right. So here we are on the F-450, 15 miles a gallon. That would be really nice because last night I was running the numbers with my Ford Bronco. And it's going to be with this trailer, I think that miles per gallon is going to be about seven. I was at eight. But this is a taller trailer. It's more trailer. And I just truly believe that, you know, this vehicle will, you know, behind that Bronco is going to be a challenge. Yeah, right here. See, we're at 15. Okay. Got the new Tundra guy coming up on me. You know that new Tundra? I like the looks of it and all. I mean, all sincereness. I'm I mean, I like that. That's a great looking truck. I like it. It's gotten terrible reviews. I mean, I'd love the trailer. You know, for me, do I part with my Avalon for that? I could do that, but right now... Yeah, I'd like to pick up a Toyota Tundra. I mean, eventually I probably will. But now with this crazy, stupid pricing around here, these dealers want 20, 30 grand over for a Tundra. How stupid are you? You get a gas Tundra? You can buy a freaking Ford Platinum F-250 diesel for the same amount of money. Which is, in long term, will hold its value and be the more better vehicle for practicality if that amount of money is spent. So that's why I'm not doing it. So, yeah, I'm everywhere, right? <laughs> but anyways, so I kind of came to closure. You know, here we are talking about fuel, right? I mean, if you wouldn't... Oh, this is classic. I mean, did anybody watch what's going on in the markets? The barrel of oil is down below $100. I, I've been preaching that the $3, 350 gas will come back. Won't have it instantly, but I can guarantee you at three dollar, you can be like, guarantee, really? Nah, no way, no way. Well, oil, the oil industry's is got challenges. People are not driving around like they used to. The dynamics of this country are changing. You know, everybody blowing away all their freaking money is changing because they don't have any money to blow away like they used to. So, nah, the the the, the four dollar, you know, the four fifty diesel, the three three fifty gas, it's coming back. The three ninety nine diesel. Maybe. Well, I just heard this truck just kicked down that transmission again. So I mean, I may find out today. Yeah, this was a huge mistake. This truck just kicked down in the parking lot, and it's like an abrupt shift down, which that's what happened to my Explorer. So that's not comforting. I could literally be on 95 today making a video, be sitting on the side of the road with, with fluids sitting on the ground below this thing. Yeah. Huh. Did the guy get rid of this for a reason? I don't know. Yikes, right? All right, just some fuel. There's the kid. Sporting the Bronco. All right. So, no, oh, I didn't grab the damn DEF out of my garage. I tell you, just can't remember anything, man. All right. So, how much is it here? Five seventy-nine. So, here's the first thing of the day. All right. So, thirteen dollars ninety-one cent for eighty bucks. But this is what I love. So if I was in my Bronco right now, see it says 406 miles to empty. You see that there? So if I was in the Bronco, eventually I'd be saying 130 miles to empty. So, all right, it's breakfast time. I've got to get breakfast. I woke up at 4 a.m. and <laughs> never went back to sleep. Crawled out of bed at 5.30 and switched out all the trucks. Now it's 7.30. All right. Now, speaking of fuel, there's Costco. It's so interesting on how Sam's Club carries diesel and helps us diesel guys out. But Costco wants nothing to do with it. You know what I mean? So, uh, all right. Kids got food for me. So let me pull over here and get my trailer out of the way and get my food, get my coffee. How about that little Bronco there, huh? They're not a Bronco badass or what? I mean, those Broncos are so much fun. 
I mean, they are just so much fun. Is the kid gonna give me self service? Like she works at a restaurant? Yeah, I've, I've had that idea. You know, people probably think, why the hell are your kid working? Trust me, she'll have many years to work. And with my family being so far away, if I put her into that schedule, you know, we won't be traveling. So, but that won't last forever, trust me. Here she comes, just nonchalantly, you know, do, 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 drop the coffee. You know, here the attitude shall prevail. Okay, so there you're getting that. Thank you, baby. All right, you're going to be able to drive and eat, or you get to sit there and eat? I can drive. Okay, well, it's hot. Because I'm cool. Oh, okay. All right, well, I'm driving. Yeah, it's a good thing we got technology. My blinker's on. It's now telling me your blinker's on. So, yeah, so now... I was saying earlier before, before I pulled that gas station, you know, the, the fuel price is not going to stay at this stupid price. Yeah, you know, the media will tell you this stuff because the media wants you to get out of bed every day and turn on their channel to be scared so that you watch TV. It's unfortunate, but that's society. And it just blows away how many continued videos are out there. Of everything's coming to an end. Yeah, don't you talk about that? Well, but my YouTube channel isn't that whole theme like other guys I mean, there's some guys have so many followers making money doing that but here's my point the barrel of oil for the first time since may fell below a hundred dollar barrel of oil well it's because these traders are starting to see that the economy is pulling back people are pulling back but even even aside that aside these traders i think are clueless that the fuel usage is down not only because of people pulling back of high gas prices but because people don't use their vehicle I'll use my wife as a perfect example and I've talked about this many times my wife used to drive 88 miles to work meaning 44 miles one way 44 miles back home without her running up the street to get something to eat or run some errand because she's out there in the country so it's about a hundred mile a day so my wife used to drive 500 miles a week to work now she's required to go into the office one or two days a week it's simple math she now drives a hundred miles to 200 miles a week okay the gas stations she used to use she doesn't use those like she used to and yes, she drives my Twitter Forerunner a lot, so she does use that. She drives the Ford Mach E, but believe it or not, she drives the Forerunner more than the Mach E. So yeah, people are like, well, she had to buy gas, she's Mach E. Well, believe it or not, she goes back and forth to see her mother a lot, and she doesn't want anything to do with this electric vehicle charging, and you know, she doesn't trust it, so she drives the Forerunner. So, anyway, she's going back to here's the reality. Reality is that transportation infrastructure's changed, so the fuel isn't being used like it used to be. And even even the point that yes, I've talked about the refineries being you know not putting out product. Well, it's a catch twenty two for these oil producers. They know it. If they if they start producing too much oil again, they're going to have forty dollar barrel oil. We're going to have two fifty three dollar gas. But for these greedy stock market guys. And the greedy oil companies, if people want to look at it that way, they're not making money. They're not making money. So they need that $80. Oil companies really need a good conservative $60 you know, plus barrel of oil just to kind of get the return on their investment. But that's all another conversation. All right. So let's check out the fuel money. Yeah, what got that conversation going? We're buying diesel fuel. So we're at 14.8 miles per gallon, 1,800 RPMs at 60 and so do we stay around that 14 you know we can keep that 14 mile per gallon we're doing pretty good but, you know here we are here's the roads wow you know you have no idea how you used to, this used to be stop and go traffic for miles and miles and miles now we will maybe get on route 66 and it's possible that will be a little little more congestion but that's a major road that's always congested and now we're coming down into the more suburban area where i live so yeah we're getting more cars in the road but it's the traffic flow moves 
I'm just telling you that the eight to five traffic in the DC metropolitan area is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. All right. <clears throat> so now the adventure begins. And what's interesting is I talk about this in my videos, how more than ever the EV movement's happening, but more than ever, the transition of how we get around and how we work is changing more than ever. So right now it's like 745 in this <coughs> Virginia area, the DC metro area, where this area is a huge government based uh, employee and it's huge government contractors. And this area here, if you look, this road, okay, is usually locked down. All right. And I talk many times about my videos on how this whole traffic, the eight to five traffic, is gone in this DC area. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying people aren't on the road, but the massive congestion is gone. It's not, you know, the same as it used to be. And because we know the remote working, you know, I would say in this area, a solid 30% of the people no longer drive to work. I, I'm vivid. No way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, a third of the workforce in this D.C. metro area is gone. They're sitting at home right now starting their work day. So, why am I bringing that up? Well, because where is the green agenda conversation about how there's less people using their cars? And that in itself... It's probably 10 or 20 years of EVs on, on the road. You know what I mean? If over the next 10 years, in which won't even happen, let's just say for the hell of it, you know, in the next 10 years, 30% of the vehicles on the road are electric vehicles. Okay. So that would be the green agenda would be jumping up and down about what they've accomplished. But yet here we are today in 2022 and in the DC metro area, 30% if not more of the traffic's off the road. That's not using fossil fuels. I mean, I'm in the industry that provides this stuff. I know what's going on. So it's insane. But that, that conversation is not gonna happen. There's no way anybody's gonna in the green agenda is gonna talk about this stuff because they're on a mission. You know, and to me their mission is confusing. All right, so she's definitely a truck. This F-450, now, I feel like my F-250 is more comfortable. There's no doubt because it's a longer wheelbase. And, you know, it's got all the platinum features. But just the way the F-250 drives. I mean, this is a fun truck, though. I mean, this is this is like your truck feel. So if you really want that good old boy's truck feel, this F-450 truck is going to be the one you're just going to love. I mean, it really is like the good old truck. Sounds like a good old truck. Drives like a good old truck. You know, so, yeah, it's a truck. By all means. And being, to me, the short wheelbase, being it's a two-door versus a four-door or extending cab, you know, it's even that much more, you know, rigid or is it? But, you know, one thing that's so nice about these diesels is, you know, that trailer back there, do I know it's back there? No. I mean, this truck, I mean, it, it, that's a feather back there. So, yeah, it's not, and that's another thing I thought about with that Bronco. You know, another thing I thought about with that Bronco is, yeah, I'm no idiot to, you know, engineering. And, yeah, I don't disagree. That truck's rated 3,200 pounds. Me doing another road trip with probably 3,800 pounds, realistically. You know, 600 pounds more than should be on there. Yeah, is that doing, you know, is that stress issues? You know, I mean, I get it. You know, there's the, the trailer hitch where it connects to the frame. Is it really, you know, tweaking those, um, you know, is it really putting a lot of stress on that frame and how that's designed, and then, yeah, I know the transmission, and, you know, and everything else, I mean, I get all that, you know, so, and I, for the record, what am I driving, you know, so, yeah, I stepped on it, you know, that's the way life is, 
I can't emphasize anybody out there. One word of wisdom that anybody has been around long enough, you've heard the saying, let me sleep on it. That is so powerful. And that's why when you're at a car dealership, they do not want you walking out that door because if you go home and sleep on it, they know you're going to be like, what? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. What are these guys trying to pull over on me? You know, motorcycle dealership, boat dealership, RV, and they're going to be wrong. I'm not saying to anybody that's that industry, you're intentionally doing things, even though, yeah, some do. It's like anything. You always have a bad apple. But the point is, just use an individual come to closure of what makes sense, and you're happy with that. Okay? I mean, that's what it's about. You know, and that's why you say you sleep on it. So for me, after I got slept on it, it was like a brick was dropped on my head at 2 a.m. this morning when I, took, when I woke up the first time. And I was like, you know what? You know what would be more fun? What would be more adventurous is taking this F-450 Dually and taking the yellow Bronco down there. That would be fun. I think that's going to be the adventure. And yeah, let the Bronco rest. You know, don't you know, don't push the Bronco. I mean, but I got to tell you, the Bronco is just so much fun, enjoyable, and comfortable to drive. So when you're pulling that trailer, that thing's just awesome. But the the downside is the damn thing drinks fuel, and I don't. I just got to thinking I do not want to stop eight times today to get fuel. You know, as I eat my own words, right? Or this transmission. This is the second time now I've gone into like a parking lot, so down, and it seems like drop down like a real abrupt, like boom. And I'm like, ooh, I don't know, man. It just, everybody knows, it's just cars, things do happen. I've had a lot of success with my Ford trucks, but bump, 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 it starts, you know, stopping. But I've had a lot of success, and I know all the stories of guys that hate Fords and tell you they're a piece of junk, they had nothing but problems. Well, I've heard the stories of guys that have had Ram trucks, too. I've heard stories about Chevy trucks. I mean, it's, I think it's just the luck of the draw. I mean, it's infinite, and Toyotas, Jaguars, BMWs, Mercedes, Hondas. I mean, I can go through the list of people who have had experiences with manufacturers' products that would tell you I'll never, ever buy that thing ever again because they had a bad experience. So, uh, all right. Follow me along on the F450 Tow Review Day. Yeah, yeah. This is pretty classic. In all sincereness, I bet there's not one F450 Tow Review Day of a 3,700-pound trailer. How about that idea, right? I know there's probably 20,000, 30,000 power views. <laughs>